Welcome to the tutorial on using the band program to conduct a transition state search. Now band can be used to model 1D, 2D, and 3D structures. Here we're going to do a one-dimensional structure a chain and that has only one lattice parameter. We've set that to 10 angstroms and we are drawing an H3 system, three hydrogen atoms and these are the distances we're setting them apart. A little bit asymmetrical and we're going to use this as the starting point for a geometry optimization. So we're setting that up, all default parameters, save it and run it. And we're just using hydrogen atoms. This is a toy system if you will, but we want something that will run and complete very quickly. And it has completed. We can read in the new geometry. And with ADF Movie, we can see how the geometry has converged. And it's converged rather quickly to a rather strange asymmetrical system. And we can look through the log file and see that indeed it has converged. Nothing's gone wrong there. But perhaps our convergence criteria were not tight enough. So we're going to modify those here, use tighter convergence than is set by default, and we're going to run this job again. So this time, because we have more strenuous convergence criteria, the job will not complete as quickly, but hopefully we'll get a geometry, an optimized geometry that makes more sense than the last one did. there. Slowly closing in and looks like we've hit it. Calculation has completed. Read in the new coordinates. And now we get something that's much more symmetric than our first one. And we can see how the energy does come down from where we were originally. Now to do a frequencies calculation on this. Again, just all default parameters. Save the job under a new name and run it. And it has completed. So we can use ADF Spectra to visualize the results. And we have two modes up there. Ignore the artifacts down at zero. And we have a nice linear system, an asymmetrical stretch, and of course, logically, a symmetric stretch. Next, we're going to do a transition state calculation using the initial Hessian from the frequencies calculation that we've just done. And here, give it a different name, H3TS for transition state, and run this calculation as well. And all these calculations should complete in little under a minute to a little bit over a limit minute because we are using just hydrogen and we're using a fairly small basis set here. Now this calculation appears to be running quite smoothly actually but if it didn't what you can do right here 
is give it a little bit of a push. We can change one of those numbers to 0 0.01 or 0 001 to push it a little bit away from the equilibrium geometry to ensure that it does move towards the transition state. But this has already gone through several cycles here and it appears the calculation is moving forward. So in this case, it wasn't necessary. Again, we see it slowly closing in on our results. We get more T's than F's, and once we get all T's in those criteria, which we just have, the calculation is completed. And we can read in the new geometry. In case you're curious of how it got to the transition state, you can open up ADF Movie again and see this one. Here, we're starting out at an equilibrium geometry and moving towards a transition state, so the energy is going up, as expected. And now we're going to do a frequencies calculation on this transition state. So we're not doing a frequency calculation on an energetic minimum anymore, but on a transition state. And for those of you who have run similar calculations with ADF, you probably know what to expect here. But this is a tutorial, so we're running it so we can learn something. See what happens in a periodic, periodic system. And now we can read in the new coordinates check out the spectra, and as you might expect, we now have one imaginary frequency which shows up as a negative number. And there's the imaginary frequency down at negative 55 reciprocal centimeters, and there's still one positive one up there as well. So that concludes this tutorial.